Uh, Tyler, last segment here today, we're going to be moving into Jedi options. And if you're a regular viewer of our program, you already know that we do this each and every Wednesday, whenever Tyler's here, he is an options aficionado. He is somebody who has taught and, you know, and educated people in the options market, how to use them properly, how to use them to reduce risk, to generate cash flow, to speculate, you name it. And uh, we decided to give him a, a little slot here and a time to be able to feature anything he wants to teach in the options market, whether it's strategy, a concept, something else, education and just run with it. So Tyler, you're up here for this week's Jedi Options. All right. Well, Padawans gather around. I got some good, I got some goodness to share with you today. Uh, we're, we're going with uh, a concept that I think will help you uh, better fundamentally understand the way the market works, uh, specifically different strategies in the options market. So uh, here we go. I got a little blackboard. And now that I'm thinking of it, I should have, I need to draw a little logo for Jedi options, a little stick figure with a lightsaber, maybe. I'll work, I'll get working on that. I'll get working on that. The concept I want to talk about is in regards to risk. We're going to color code this reward and probability specifically. When, when people talk about probability in the context of trading, it is virtually always the probability that you will make money, the probability of success, or more commonly, the probability of profit, which we use POP uh, for short, or uh, pop, probability of profit. So when I first started trading, I learned how to trade stock, and it was beaten into my head that you need to look for situations where you're risking a little bit of money to make a lot of money. Uh, the reward to risk ratio. You want to be risking a dollar to make two dollars or a dollar to make three or four or five dollars. You want to risk a little to make a lot. And the reason for that is because when you're trading a stock, your baseline odds are 50-50. The stock could go up, the stock could go down. And if you only win half the time, you need to win more on those 50% those winners than you lose on the 50% losers. So if my average reward is $2 and I win half the time and my average risk is a dollar and I lose half the time, I still come out ahead. So the, the, the more asymmetric or lopsided the, the risk is versus the reward, uh, where you have more reward versus risk, the more likely you are to make money over time. Okay, that's a, that's a fair concept. It's a true concept. It is completely applicable and smart to think that way when you're trading stock because you can't really shift the odds, right? You just assume any stock I buy at any time, you flip a coin, you get a 50-50 chance. You can try to improve upon those odds with skill and by picking better stocks and better timing the market. But in reality, you're not changing the baseline odds, which are 50-50. What's interesting about the options market is there's another dynamic to consider. You know, it's like there's another dimension. It becomes three-dimensional instead of two-dimensional or two-dimensional instead of one-dimensional. You don't just live in a world of risk versus reward. Now probability enters the equation. And so you have to realize in the options market, um, sometimes we, we, we refer to this as like a zero sum game and a zero sum game where basically what one party wins, the other party loses. Okay. So zero sum game, like in politics, if you have two parties and everybody votes, everybody has to vote whatever number of votes one party gains, the other party by default loses, right? Um, and so in the options market, when you take a trade, there's somebody on the other side of that transaction and they're not going to take the other side of the trade unless it makes sense for them. So when you do a trade where you're risking, say a dollar to make $9, the person on the other side of that specific transaction is risking $9 to make a dollar. And you have to ask yourself, why would somebody do that? What would motivate someone to risk $9 to make a buck? What must be true if they're willing to do that? And you'll discover that it has to do with the probability. Okay. And so you're risking a dollar to make $9 you don't have a really good chance of making that nine bucks. I hate to break it to you. When you're risking a little bit to make a lot, you can, you can get excited about potentially making that nine bucks. But you, what you have to realize is you're not getting something for nothing. There's a trade-off 
And in this case, that trade-off is the likelihood, the probability of you capturing that $9 profit. Let's say it's 10%, okay? So risk and reward are linked together, but so too is the reward you can get and the probability of actually getting that reward. And as you build different option trades, you'll discover that as you manipulate the reward up or down, it will automatically change the associated probability. Otherwise, we would all enter trades where we're risking a dollar to make a million dollars with a 99% chance of success. Well, that would never exist because nobody's willing to take the other side of that transaction. So if you're the guy who's risking a dollar to make $9 and you've got a 10% chance of making that $9, the person on the other side of the transaction, he's the guy who's going to lose nine bucks. So that's his risk. He can make a dollar because that's your risk. And his odds of making the buck, again, the only reason he's going to risk nine to make a buck is if he's got a really good chance of making that dollar. In this case, it's going to be 90%. So the key takeaway with understanding this is you can't separate probability with the potential reward. They come hand in hand. So in the options market, as you build trades, if you want to, to build a play that has a lot of potential profit, like say a long call option, like that risk reward and probability. Now this is an extreme example. 10% is a really low probability, but I'm using an extreme uh, situation here to illustrate the point. Risking a little to make a lot, but with a low probability is um, similar or, or goes hand in hand or is the characteristic, sorry, I'm trying to figure out how I wanna say this as I'm saying it. That Those are the characteristics of something like buying a call option or buying a put option. They're sexy if you make it uh, right, or that is if you win, if you make the money, you've got a lot of potential profit, but the odds aren't very good. On the other hand, if you say, hey, I want something with a really high probability of profit, like a naked put, which is selling a put option, that has more characteristics like this, risk nine bucks to make a buck. And you think, ah, I'm risking a lot to make a little. Yeah, but you got a 90% probability. So every time you build a trade in the options market, there's these, these factors where if you pull one lever, it automatically shifts the other, okay? And you always have a decision to make. So the example, and then I'll wrap this up here, the example I wanna show on this, practical application, GDX was a ticker symbol on the options report this last week. And we've, we've, I know Matt and Tim and us, we've talked about this on the halftime report, but gold miners got beat up and they're sitting at a major weekly support level, started it to show some signs of strength last week. So, you know, bottoming characteristics starting to show up on the daily chart. So we put it on the list. Suppose you want to do a trade on GDX, a bullish trade. You have a choice. Where do you want to lie on that risk reward spectrum versus probability? If you want a lot of potential reward, you might come in here on this $32 stock and you may say, hey, I'm going to go buy a November in the money call option, a November 32 call option. The risk is 185 bucks and my reward is unlimited. Right? If I look at the risk graph, which shows me a picture of the trade. Okay, one more time. My, my reward is unlimited. Okay. But what are the odds that GDX is going to go to a big number, you know, say 35? I mean, for me to double my money, it's got to get to about $35. Well, the odds of GDX getting to $35 by November are about 29%. So there's a 71% chance it's not going to get there. Only about a 30% chance it is. So that big potential profit has much less than 50% odds of you actually capturing it. It's a legit trade though. I mean, you could do it. You could do that. Or you could say, nah, I, I prefer, you know, I just played this side of the, the, the numbers. I prefer this one where I'm risking a lot to make a little, but I got that really high probability. Okay. Well, why don't you go sell a naked put then? Why don't you come in in October, sell a 20 Delta put. Okay. Um, you get $37, the margin requirements 415. So you're probably around an 8% return. You're not at hundred percent return potential anymore. Maybe you've got an eight, 8% 8 return. Oh, that's not that great. 
Yeah, but your probability is like 80%. Your probability is like 80%. So to compensate you for the fact that you get a lower return, there's a much greater likelihood you'll actually capture that. So this, in sum here, this is always a dynamic that you have to consider when you're picking different strategies in the options market. And it makes it a much more interesting game than those that are playing stock because there really isn't this probability component in the stock market because the baseline odds, it's 50-50. So you're always obsessed about risk reward with stocks. Options opens up that third dimension where, where now you've got this additional consideration, which both makes it complicated, it's a little more complicated, but it gives you more control. You have a lot more control over how you structure your bets uh, with this, this risk reward versus probability of profit. That's the end of the lesson. Matt, Sam, what do you got? Couple things. Number one, thank you very much for going through that. Uh, you know the thought process you have here around risk, reward, and probability of profit around the options market. Uh, in one of the tools we use at Tackle Trading, the Tackle Theta spreadsheet, there's a, uh, a mathematical factor called ROID, and there's a reason why ROID exists. It's to be able to take this conversation and turn it into data. Option sellers, you know, they tend to focus on high probability trades, right? Uh, we want to have that high pop ratio so that we know that we can generate income through theta and consistency and all that kind of stuff. But it also has to be relative to what your risk is. And that's where delta comes in. There's a lot of mathematical factors that go into it. Option buyers. And I also think what this also does for me, Tyler, it opens up Pandora's box in a way for a conversation, which is a good thing, not a bad thing in, in my, my, my analogy, because what do you want? What do you want in your trading behavior? Do you want to be right a lot? Okay, well, you can do naked puts. You can get a high pop. You can take in lower reward. You can then manage the risk. Uh, Coach Mark, you know, in the uh, Cashflow Vikings, you know, trading lab, that's what he does all, all, all the time. I know that you do that a lot with your naked put selling, cover call selling, things like that. But do you, all, do you want to have the big reward potential? That's where long calls will come in. You know, you're willing to take a lower bet, a lower risk, a lower amount you're putting in the market, higher potential reward if you can ca catch those directional moves. So I think every option trader, if especially if you're new, you need to start to understand these concepts because then it's going to lead you to conversations that help you identify what strategies you want to focus on, how you want to build your portfolio design, how you want to execute all of those different tactics. So I appreciate you bringing it up. I think it's important. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Maddie, any thoughts on uh, Jedi options here today? Yeah, I, two things. Uh, first and foremost, I love Jedi options. I, I love the theory crafting. I love the strategy discussion. I, I just, I love everything Tyler brings to Jedi options. Um, that's number one. So thank you, Tyler. Uh, number two, what Tyler is discussing is kind of the thought process I was going through 10 years ago when I created Roid. Mm -hmm. Was when I was a young trader and people would just tell me, hey, you're looking for 10% of the spread. And I'm like, well, okay there's got to be more to it there's and and for me it was always like if somebody taught me something I, I would accept it but i would like to go detail it myself and i'd like to go dive into it myself to make sure it actually makes sense and to me the the early teachings that i had of oh if you can get to a bull put spread or a naked put and you're just looking for this percentage gain in a market that has nothing but gain and loss, you can find that anywhere with any product almost. And so for me, it was like, I'm sitting there looking at this and I'm saying, it's missing something. It's missing something. And the something was exactly what Tyler's talking about. Trading, especially in options, is not just a calculation of risk versus reward. Mm -hmm. it, it's absolutely about the probability analysis. And in fact, I would say the probability analysis is probably more important than the reward versus risk but again they're both they're both very important and so what i started doing was just crafting you know uh reward versus risk versus different deltas based on probability and we create a, a set standard for you know credit spreads naked puts iron condors that do take into account okay here is your potential return here is your probability and, 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 and based on those metrics, what you're looking for on a bull put trade is this specific ROID. And so it's not just a calculation of reward versus risk. It's not just a calculation of probabilities 
those two should not be seen separate. They should be seen identically, simultaneously together, and that's what ROI does. It takes the potential ROI that you are anticipating, and it divides it by the delta, and then we've created standards of tackle to mm -hmm. determine which one is good versus which one is great versus which one is terrible. And then you take that into account with ATR ranges and everything else we, we teach from a credit spread perspective, and it becomes extremely powerful. And whereas I certainly do agree with Tyler that trading, and he started it with trading, is a zero-sum game. You have winners and losers, and that is true. But, but successful traders live on the edge, and things like ROID can give you an edge against the competition out there.